A pleasant good evening. You're all welcome to uh, this evening's Class of Steam. Today is Monday Bank Holiday, Monday the 18th of April 2022. And I hope that you had a, a pleasant resurrection um, holiday. It was a, a period of reflecting and, and refocusing in some cases and redefining um, our um, purpose in life and, and remembering also of our commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as, as Christians for us who are Christians like myself and, and most of our teams. So again, welcome to this evening's class. I want to give a special welcome um, to um, the Chief of Protocol, His Excellency Dr. Ewers, uh, Dr. Donald Yours is based here in the United Kingdom, and he works closely with us in making sure that we in the class of so we follow protocols and things are done decently and in order. Equally, I want to um, identify the person of His Royal Majesty, Edwin Nefiani uh, Madu. His Royal Majesty is the Honorable Patron uh, for the class of steel and equally for those in royalty. He is responsible with Her Excellency uh, Bishop Dr. Comfort Adu for the monarchs of the nations here in the class of steel. And we have quite a few monarchs who are a part of what we do behind the scenes, some in front and some behind the scenes. And I want to equally Acknowledge the First Lady, uh, Jeannie Steele, the First Lady. Welcome to the class of Steele this evening. Uh, Reverend Stephen Abu and also Her Excellency Doreen Barunji and His Excellency Architect Olusugun Olukoya, all of our management team um, that are with us this evening. And those of you who are online on the YouTube and equally on our Facebook and our other platforms, you're very welcome to this evening's Class of Steel presentation. Well, jumping straight into this evening's class, one of the things that we, we, we looked at is branding. We, we had a, a look at branding and different things with the uh, Class of Steel youth. We, we also looked at a lot of things pertaining to how we view things, how we um, manage and, and how we carry ourselves in certain circles and environs. And, and this evening, I want to revisit, I want to revisit one of our earlier trainings, the principles of inspiration. I think that it is very fitting because the principles of inspiration will, will kind of help us to look at where we are at in our personal lives. And have we lost inspiration? Are we no longer inspired? All of those dynamics. But the key question that is being asked is, are you ready to be inspired? Are you ready to be inspired? Are you ready to be inspired? Looks creative. Looks like, oh, you've made some errors there. Nah, it's just inspiration. They're not errors. <laughs> inspiration is, it comes from you. It's something that's unique to you. Nobody can... Nobody can, can give it to you. You take it from what others give to you. I'll say that again. I cannot inspire you. I can only give you information and what you do with that information that I give to you determines whether or not you'll be inspired. So I can't inspire you. Remember that. Somebody says, of course I can inspire you by what I tell you, what I said. No, that's not true. There's, there's, a, there's a fallacy about that. I cannot inspire you. I can give you information. And what you do with that information, it would determine if I inspired you, or I frustrated you, or I angered you, 
or I make you run away from your task at, at hand. So remember that inspiration comes only through your own acceptance and interpretation of information that was given to you and you use it to fuel what you're going to do. And that fuel is called inspiration. Let's go on. The process of being mentally stimulated to do, feel, or experience. It's a process. Inspiration is a process of being mentally, we're going to look at mentally, mentally stimulated. When I say something to you, it, it does something to your mentality. It, it, it enhances it. It improves it. It, it changes the way you see things. It gives you a paradigm shift. It makes you look at things differently. You think, hmm, that's interesting. And, and then you go into that mode of creating and adding value to what you just received. So it's, it, it's basically the process of being mentally stimulated to do, feel, or experience. So sometimes you get mentally stimulated to do something, do something that you haven't done before. You jumped into it and, and you go and you do it. Or you get inspired to feel. You, you, you went somewhere and, and you, you're stood and you hear the music. You go to a club and you hear the music and you start nodding your head. It starts with your mental stimulation. You nod your head. And then you snap your fingers. You, you, you started to feel it. And, and, and then you, you start to, to move your shoulders. Yeah. Because you're being what? Mentally stimulated to, to feel. I can feel this. But, but then you, you go to the next place where it was an experience. You experience what everybody else is experiencing because you, you, you give your chance, the yourself the opportunity to, to, to listen, to, to embrace, to, and to feel, and, and, and to then experience the music. So there's a process. It doesn't just happen like that. There's a process that's going to need your participation. Let's look at some results of inspiration. So the results of inspiration are an idea. You, you get an idea. Hmm. A person, place, experience, or a thing. An idea. And, and, and then you get a desire. So you have an idea, and then you, you get a desire. And it could be um, from a person. It could come from a place. It could come from an experience, or it could come from something. But an idea comes. And, and then a desire comes. And again, that desire could come equally from a person, a place, an experience, or a thing that makes you want to do, feel, or experience. Are, are you with me? Inspiration comes from many places. A lot of people, sometimes they, they, they have an inclination to do something and they don't have any form of, how do I even start? How, how do I even begin to, to do this? And you, you, the first thing you're going to need is inspiration. You're going to need inspiration. Whatever you desire to do, you are going to need inspiration. And, and you need to remember that and take that close to heart. You're going to need inspiration. And you can get that inspiration from a person, somebody that you like, that you know, that is already in that field or in that area, or somebody that you have spoken to in the past and it's something they thought about they will inspire you more because they have more ideas. You, you might get it from a place. I like going to museums. And when I go to a museum with Josh and, and Jeannie, you, you get inspired from a museum because you see a lot of things and, and you think to yourself, wow, 
this thing looks so antiquated. But it was the inspiration at the time that if we look at technology, if we look at the advancements in, in things, transportation, communication, um, technology, if we look at them, you will recognize something. All of them have a basis of inspiration. And, and somebody decided to improve on what was already existing. They added value to it. So they became creators. They were inspired to be creators. I, I, I had a um, something that I designed, I think in the in 1990, in, in about 1994. When I came to the UK in, in 94, there was something that I discovered that was quite interesting in 95. I'm sorry, 1995. When I came to the UK, there was something I discovered that was interesting. And a lot of tires. I started to focus on how could you get rid of tires, burning tires. And, 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 and then I looked at the pollution and everything. And I created a model. I just laid down one, um, one day. And I created a full-scale model of burning tires without one ounce of the toxic fumes going into the environment. Not one ounce of air or toxicity gets into the environment with this thing I designed with burning tires. And I looked at it in depth and, and I detailed it and I fine-tuned it and I ran through, is this real? Is this true? Is this good? And I looked at what is the possibilities. And when I spent a couple of weeks on it, I decided, oh my goodness, I don't want to send this to a bank or to anybody to get financing or funding to do this because they're going to steal my idea. So I started to research how would you, how are you going to go into now getting it um, patented and copyrighted and, and then getting it as an invention and, and all of those details I started going into. My God, when it looked at the cost, the Herculean cost to present an invention and then how many places you could um, patent it, et cetera. Oh, is there waiting for my glory days when I think I can afford to, to bring it to the world? But since 1995, I was inspired because I was in a place in Oldham. And one of the things in Oldham was a lot of pollution because of the coal that was from, from burning the coal and all of the chimneys. So I thought of how could you create something that you can still burn, but it doesn't get into the atmosphere. And I did it, proud to say. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've actually recorded anything that stated that. But in my time, when I, whenever that time comes, I think I will get it um, patented, et cetera. But you get inspired. You get that idea, and then it gives you a desire and a want to do. And then there needs to be a motivator. A person, again, a place, an experience, a thing that makes you want to continue doing. I got demotivated with my invention. Why? Because of the Herculean cost of getting it where I want it to be and finding the right person to share it with that you know they're not going to run away with it. So sometimes you put things on the back burner, but you're going to need something that's going to cause you to continue doing what you're doing because it is important. Now let's look at when inspired, what happens? So when inspired, you become purposeful. You become pur purposeful. And let me ask you a personal question. Let me ask you a question. Are you inspired in any way to your personal life, personal business initiative or whatever you're doing? Are you inspired? Are you purposeful? Do you stick to it? Do you work at it um, you know, continuously? You don't go to the left or to the right. You stay focused. The Class of Steel is one of the, the inspirations uh, that we have and we're not going to the left or to the right. 
I'm not even turning to up, down. If it doesn't match with the class of steel or isn't a part of the class of steel for me, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't even worth the time of day for me. Why? Because we are purposeful. We know where we're going and what we're trying to accomplish. Active. You remain active. Sometimes you look at person's um, status and you see inactive. It means they're, they're logged off or, or they're no longer there. Or, or they're no longer focusing on what they were doing before. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do the class of sleep. I, I, I don't respond to persons that ask me or send me a message, do we have the class of steel today? <laughs> I don't respond to those messages. If I don't give you an announcement that says there's no class of steel, you can be assured there will be class of steel because we're purposeful and we are active. Elevated. When you're inspired, you become elevated. You, you, look at, you look at what you're doing at such a different level and you become elevated. And then you have bursts of energy. I like the term bursts of energy. How many of you know sometimes you, you lose energy, you lose a little motivation, you can get a little tired. So you get bursts. When you think of a good thing or a good experience, you get a burst of energy. You are aware of enlarged possibilities. My goodness, I had a meeting um, today in, in, with somebody in Barbados pertaining to the class of steel. And I, I, I am so excited of, of possibilities. My goodness, I had an amazing meeting on the behalf of class of steel and, and I'm excited about the possibilities. New perceptions. You continue to develop new perceptions. I know that his majesty is a, a businessman and, and, and he works continuously building relationships, establishing partnerships. And, and, and that is one of the things that, that is the driving force behind what he does. But equally, equally, his majesty is also in, in so many other ways that just in the class of still improving himself. A lot of times individuals want to be better that, than where they are currently and they don't improve themselves. If you don't improve on yourself, your expectations or the things you want, then you, you will not have a new perception. You can only get a new perception as you continue to improve on yourself or as you continue to improve on what you're building or what you're doing. That's the only way there will be any other change. You become empowered and you become more capable, more capable. How, how are you more capable? Because when you improve ourselves, or should I say when we, when we improve ourselves, then we're in a position to add value that wasn't there before. Remember that. And let's look at a little, uh, a little statement here about adding value, empowered and more capable. Let's look at adding value. You know, there's a, there's a thing called value added tax. Let me tell you what value added tax is all about. So America or UK or anywhere in the world, or you, for example, you would go to China or Africa or wherever your, your produce that you need are, or your products that you need are, and you would bring them in bulk to your factory. You're, you're going to do potatoes. Let's just use potatoes just for the sake of this example. You bring all of these potatoes into um, into your factory. But now you have to do something that is also very important. You see, because you went to, to a, a potato uh, plantation and you just bring a whole loads of potatoes to your plant, to your producing plant. They might have rocks in them. Some of them might even have dirt on the potatoes. They, they might not be all nice and prepared because you buy them at a, a more reasonable price because they're, you, you are now intending to add value to them. 
So you bought the potatoes at one cent per, per potato. And then you put the potato through your factory and you wash them. All of them are now washed and clean. And then you size them. All of them are now sized. And then you package them. And then you send some to another part of your factory that you get them chopped into chips. Are, are you with me? So basically, you took a product. And what did you do to that product? You added value. Now, when we looked at personal branding, you yourself as an individual, I am a product. Do I add value to myself? Do I add value to who I am? Because that determines how empowered and capable you become. I have a brain. Do I go and study to get my, my master's, my bachelor's, or my, my bachelor's, my master's, and, and then my, my PhD, my doctorate? Do I, do I improve myself? Those are critical things to make you more capable. Am I being mentored? Do I have someone that, that speaks to me and, and say to me, yes, Michael, that's a good idea, what you're doing, but you need to, to do this, to add value to what you're doing. Because this will improve on your product. This would improve on what you're offering to others. You package it better. And how many of you know that we don't have everything? We do not. If, if, we, if you think that by yourself, you're a one-man army, you, you have everything you need, you, we, we, we fool ourselves. We don't. We don't. And, and, and that's why we, we learn something that's important. When we're inspired, we get driven. You're driven to do better. You're driven to, to just stay on the cutting edge. You become limitless. What does limitless mean? What does limitless mean? It means that if something doesn't work, if something isn't a part of the process that is functioning, you're not limited to that thing that's not working. Why? Because you're ever improving on what you have. And you can simply say, I will remove or get rid of this character or attitude that I have that is not adding value to me. I remember when I first started teaching, my, my, the way of teaching was different. It was more aggressive, more loud and and more like a preacher, because you see, I come from a, a preacher background. I'm a, I'm a bishop, and, and I come from a preacher's background. But if you want to be well-rounded, you, you have to continually redefine your approach to things. You have to continually look at your vocabulary, look at your, your, your education to a degree where you communicate at a different level. I can't communicate at a Christian inspired level everywhere or every platform that I'm on. When I'm in church and I'm and I'm preaching and teaching, it's a different level. So I'm limitless. I, I can go and, and I can preach as a preacher, which I am, and that will never leave me. That's my life. That's who I am as a preacher, as a teacher of the word of God. But equally, as a mentor, as an individual who, who is able to, to communicate with individuals outside of just spirituality, outside of just religion, I become limitless. I'm, and I'm very confident. I'm very confident because why? When you, when you get empowered and, and when you learn more, improve on yourself, you gain more confidence. His Excellency, Dr. Ewers, and, and all of those that are in the class of steel, I've watched their confidence levels grow. Why? Because they see me, they hear me, they listen to me. And then when they get an opportunity themselves, they, they, they become confident. The first time that you speak, you will not be like me or you will not be like a, a, a proficient speaker or eloquent speaker. You will not. It takes time. 
it takes exercise, it takes practice. When you listen to more speakers, you become more what? Empowered. And, and when you get teaching and somebody critiquing what you do, you become more capable. And then you're more driven and confident. You become more creative. You're more willing to learn. Why is the, if you look at this model that I'm giving you about when inspired, you would recognize that each level is important to the level before it. But you need that level to complete and get to the level after it. I, I want you to see that. You're driven, and because you're driven, now you're limit, limitless. Then you become confident because you realize, hey, I don't have to stop. It's kind of like if you drive a, a car that doesn't use uh, fuel, because your mind used to drive with fuel all the time, now you're driving a solar panel on top of your car and, and you, you now realize, hey, I can drive anywhere even if there are no gas stations. Why? Because you are limitless. And then you become what? More confident because you recognize I am limitless. Hey, come on, somebody. And then you become more creative. I can drive faster. I can drive slower. It's up to me. Because I'm creative. But then you're willing to learn. Hmm, how can I use this technology to be more effective in somewhere else? Hmm. So I have a solar panel for electricity and energy for the car. How could I, hey, maybe I could use this solar power to fuel all of the, the lights and connect this and connect that. You, you become more creative with what you've learned. And you're equally willing to learn because you will call somebody and they will tell you how you can become more effective. And then there's a wellness in you. You become more well. You're no longer stressed. You're no longer troubled. You're no longer overwhelmed. I remember the, the first time in doing the class of steel. I was not limitless at that time. I was purposeful. I remember there were times I was inactive and discovered inactivity doesn't serve you well because when persons expect you're there, you're not there, then, you know, it don't serve you too well. And, 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 and then I started to grow. So, so you become more well because there's less stress. You're more connected. You're more connected to yourself and you're more connected to your purpose. And you're more connected to those who are a part of what you're doing or what you're building. You're more connected. And then, of course, you are attuned. That's important. You learn how to take the bull by the horns. You see me here with a bull by the horns. How many of you know that when you take a bull by the horns, you control him? Just don't let go of those horns. Grab all those horns and hold them and control that bull. Because once you once you push that bull's head where you want it, the body will follow suit. Once you take those horns and push them where you want them, the body is going to follow. Because the bull doesn't want his head or his neck to be broken. So what is he going to do? He's going to turn the body. Because the very weight of his own body can break his neck. And he knows that. So when you twist his horns, what is he going to do? Lay down. Because he doesn't want the weight of his body to, to, to cause you to break his neck. All right, I'll leave that with you for those of you who are interested in bullfighting. Prepare for inspiration. How, how could you prepare for inspiration? How do you prepare the ground of your understanding? How do you do that? Open your listening, thinking, and emotions to receive. You have to open them. They're not going to open by default. As a matter of fact, how many of you ever sat in a room and a TV is on, and you haven't even heard a word of the TV. How many of you have ever done that? How many of you have ever sat and you haven't heard a word? 
The reason why you haven't heard a word is because you're not listening. It's because you're not thinking about it or you're not focused on it. And you don't hear a word. How many of you are in a room and like a restaurant, a busy restaurant, so many other conversations are going on, but you are sat speaking to the person in front of you. You don't, you, 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 you don't even hear the person that's next to you because you're not listening to them. But the opposite is also true. If you're sat talking to somebody in front of you, but you could hear everybody else's conversation. You're focusing on their conversation and not the conversation that you're listening to the person in front of you. I'll tell you the honest truth. You will not hear what the person in front of you are saying. You will hear them in part because each moment you split to listen to what somebody else is saying, you've lost the moment of what the person in front of you is saying. My wife and I usually have some very interesting dialogues pertaining to this because I say, my wife says I can't multitask I says no darling I'm so focused when I'm communicating that I have to look at the person and I have to speak with them because I've trained myself I've trained myself that if I'm speaking with you I'm going to be focused with to you I'm going to stay focused or anything pertaining to the conversation that I'm having with you so therefore, I stop what I'm doing to have a conversation because I don't want to miss any words that you might say that might be relevant to my responding to you. So I want to be able to respond to you when you ask me a question. So preparing the ground of our understanding, we need to learn to listen. A lot of us don't know how to listen. We do not. Because we take for granted when songs come into our ears that we are listening. That's not true. When songs come into our ears, normally our ears are open and songs will come in. And I can assure you, a lot of people hear a lot of stuff, but they cannot regurgitate anything. Why? Because they have not learned how to listen. Thinking and emotions um, to receive. Approve your mentor mentally. If your TV is your mentor, if your TV is your mentor, if you if you if you are sat in your um, in your house, uh, for example, and you watch inspirational or motivational uh, videos or content, if those are your mentor, approve your mentor. What do I mean by approve? Approve means that you give your mentor your attention because. It means that you will receive what is coming to you and you will not be distracted. Mentally, you, you, you have to give yourself to the conversation that you're having. Am I having a conversation with my wife? I give myself mentally to her. Am I having a conversation with my company director or, or, or the boss? I give myself to him. Why? Because when I give myself to him, I know that what he's communicating with me, I'm going to receive. Secondly, approve the place. Approve the place. So what do I mean by approving the place? If I know that I'm an easily distracted person, when I go to, let's just use the statement, for example, uh, of this discourse, um, or this discussion, let's use the place of going to a, a disco. A disco, for example, for, 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 the, pur for the purpose of this um, scenario. If you and I want to have a meeting and you told me, hey, Mike, let's meet. And I said, okay, that's cool. Where are we going to meet? We're going to meet at this disco, man. I, I like this, this. You like music. You like discos. Okay, fine. And when we go to this disco, the music is too loud. You're talking to me and shouting in my ears. And, and I can't understand what you're saying. I, I can't hear you. And I'm distracted. I, I'm wrestling with the location. The place is not satisfactory. Or let's say we have a private meeting. We want to speak some very private things. And you take me to a crowded restaurant that 
One seat is here and then the next seat is, is right next to us. And, and we want to talk private things, but we're cautious of the persons that are listening to us and, and could hear us. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? You have to approve the place. If somebody's going to be your mentor and, and you're going to sit down and, and have dialogue, if you're having a phone conversation with me and, and, and I could hear all of the noise of your radio or your TV or, or the football game that you're at or the person that is next to you or you, you're in a crowded environment, the place is, is, is difficult to communicate with. So you have to approve the place. Preparing the ground of your understanding. Approve the place. Approve the experience. You have to approve it. Approve the thing. What is that thing that we're going to use? Oh, we're going to use Zoom. Ah, uh, I don't like Zoom. Uh, it's so annoying to use Zoom and the, the internet and cutting off. Uh, it's an annoyance. So, so you're not going to get any understanding if you are fighting and wrestling with, with the technology yourself. If the technology isn't clear, if the communication isn't clear, you, you're not going to be successful in being able to, to do what you want to do and your understanding is going to be limited. Because when you get cut off and you miss a bit of information and then you get connected again, and it, it can become frustrating. So approve the thing that you're going to be allowing to be used to mentally guide you, to mentally stimulate you, to improve your understanding. Approve the process. You know, when I started the class of steel and, and we look at mentoring, there's a reality that came to me, an interesting and, and a, a very interesting reality that came to me. Michael, you took 30, 40, 40, 50 years to become who you are. And when you look at who you have become and, and being a mentor, it, it's, it's not a quick fix. It, it, it's not a quick fix. Who I have become as a result of my mentoring, personal mentoring, personal development, I can't give that to somebody in one week or one month or one year. Come on, somebody, you, you, you're a farmer, Stephen, you're a farmer. And, and you know that when you plant your crops, you, as big as, it, you, you look and see, oh my God, you went to the market and you bought a sweet pepper, for example. I'm very, I used to experiment with sweet peppers with my mom and we, we had a, a sweet pepper tree that had red, yellow, and green sweet peppers. It used to bear three types of sweet peppers, a sweet pepper tree. And we, we, were, we were fond of that tree. But it took a time to, to, to be able to get that hybrid, that, that hybrid. It was very interesting. But you see those big sweet peppers and you think, wow, I want to do that. It's going to take a process. You know you have to get that seed when you, when you cut open the sweet pepper. And the seed has to die. It has to die. <laughs> it has to. And then you put it in, in your, however you're going to put it to, 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 to let it grow. And you put a red one, you put a green one, and you put a, a, a yellow one. And you put them to grow. And then when they're growing, you, you, you kind of, you know, I wouldn't tell you all of my secrets. But you let them grow together as a family. And they become best friends. <laughs> and then you see a sweet pepper tree that has three types of sweet peppers. Wow. But there's a process and it takes time. Don't look for quick fixes if you want perfection and excellence. Don't look for quick fixes. As a matter of fact, as quick as a microwave might heat your food, if you take it out of the microwave and you go and take a phone call for five minutes, by the time you get back, it's cold. Because it's not real hot. 
it is actually radiation hot. And radiation hot, this I, I was gonna say a word that I radiation hot gets gets released quicker than fire hot in your pan. Fire hot in your pan will last very long because it's real heat. Radiation heat will go away quickly. As a matter of fact, radiation heat will cause you radiation damage as well, equally. That's why we don't own a microwave because microwaves are just that, radiation. So allow your understanding to be comfortable. Hmm. Don't wrestle with, with ideas. Do not ever have a mentor in a subject that is not as versed as you. Don't ever do it. Never have somebody. I cannot mentor you in financial instruments and the rudiments of um, currency at a deep level. I cannot. I am mentored in those things and I could share my knowledge with you. But when it comes to the nitty gritty and the fine details of those things, I have a professor in the person of Professor Carlos Santos who owns and manages and founder of Ethos Asset Management. That's his role, that's his knowledge, that's his life. He, he, owns, prof he owns professorships. In, in that area of taxation and law and currency and the rudiments of instruments and banking um, instruments. That's his baby. That's his thing. That's his forte. He advises the Federal Reserve. He, he's a, a top level executive globally, sought after globally because of that knowledge. So when I sit at his feet, I am I'm comfortable and I'm very confident. However, I'm not going to sit and allow somebody to mentor me that doesn't know these the finer details of what I want to learn. Why would I have somebody that is at a lesser level than myself in an area mentoring me? Stephen, you're a farmer. Why would I try to mentor somebody in your job? You know your soil. You know your ground. You know, you know the, 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 the tools that you use. You know what works in your, in your region. You know the topography of the soil. You know the, the dynamics, the breakup, the consistency. The, you know those things. Why would I try to mentor you in something? Or why would you get me as a mentor in that area when that's your profession and your expertise? So always remember, Remember, your, your understanding must be comfortable in who is teaching you. Because once you're comfortable, you know you will derive benefit. Where can I get inspiration? Where can I get it from? Where? You ask yourself that question. Where can I get inspiration? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> I love this one. The class of steel. You, you know, when we set up the class of steel, we had a little, a, a little thing that I smile at. I smile at. A lot of people don't have a clue where we're going. I know where we're going for sure. And, and I say, I know where we're going because I'm the visionary for the class of steel. I'm the brains and uh, behind the class of steel and first lady, her excellency, Jean Steele, she knows where we're going. We have a plan. We have a focus and a vision and we know what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. And as a result of that, we're going somewhere together. And if you want to be inspired and you want to get to the next level, we can help you. We're just one of the many places. Because of course, in your time and in your life, you're gonna have many mentors. Many mentors that fulfill personal roles. Some are gonna fulfill a role in one area and others are gonna fulfill a role in another area. 
Now get ready for inspiration and locations. Where are some of those places that you can get inspiration? What are those locations? Well, I'm going to share this last slide with you. And then we will stop there for inspiration for today. Locations. Mentors. Socializing. You can get it from mentors and socializing. You can learn new things. Places. Bookstore libraries. Reflection and introspection. You can get inspiration from reflecting and looking back, reading and writing, music, podcasts, lectures. You can get it from the environment. You can get inspiration from the environment. When you go out and take walks and you look around, creation gives you inspiration. Your hobby. You can get inspiration from your hobbies or good times. You can get inspiration from research what others in your field are doing. You get inspiration from outside of your comfort zone. Many places to be inspired. And in those places where you get inspiration from, remember this, derive the most that you can get from those locations. Maximize what you do and how you do it in those locations. The time is now 7.56. I want to thank you for listening to that um, first part on inspiration. And we're going to come back and look at that uh, another time. An another time. And, and the reason why I say another time is because we have something unique that we have to do on Wednesday that will not allow us to do that inspiration on Wednesday. Something very interesting that we will be doing. But I want to thank you for that on inspiration. Stephen, I want to ask you, what did you receive from that um, teaching this evening, that brief introduction to inspiration? Reverend Stephen Abu. Good evening, sir. You're excellent. Good evening, Stephen. You're welcome. Good evening. Happy Easter, sir. Oh, thank to you. The, yes. To, uh, good evening to, to Her Excellency Jenny Steele, the GOC. I want to also to greet uh, um, the professor in the house, um, His um, Excellency Dr. Dono Yors, <laughs> His Royal Majesty Edwin Madu. If I do get it too, I want also to greet Her Excellency um, Dr. Margaret. So, uh, so I, the topic today, um, quite, 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 quite um, interesting and eye-opening. I, I had some futures when I was growing up to be inspired and um, when you were telling me, telling us about your stories that you went to a new location and you got inspired to do some few things and and you, and you you came up with a great idea and you had a hitch because of the cost of you know of uh, of, uh, of of keeping it private. I mean, privatizing it, uh, keeping it to yourself. I mean, before you publish it so that somebody will not steal it uh, and all that. I. When, when I was coming up, I had such inspiration, inspiration when I went to different uh, locations within Nigeria to see the issues that were out, uh, the environmental issues that were going on there. And I was seeing it from a different light. And um, I came up with solutions to, to them too, and all that, and all you need to do. And, and this has really um, inspired me as I go along in life even to what I do and what I figure out that, um, you know, when you get to different environment from where you are, from your comfort zone, there are things that, um, your, that opens your eye. Even when you are traveling, there are things that um, you get enlightened about on the situation around. Once you are always traveling, you all look around at the environment, you are inspired by one thing or another. So inspiration hangs on every form of location and places you go, their inflation, they just allow for the mental awareness, as you said, mental 
you know, improving your mental capability to see these things as they are, so that you'll be able to do, feel, and experience them. And these are, these are great things. So when we have this, it starts with an idea, as you said, and then it develops, you know, uh, gradually to the desire, and then you need a motivator or a motivation to go on in life and all that. So I, I, I was looking at it. This is a very great thing. And this is how um, um, youths are formed, kids are formed from, a, you know, inspiration, inspiration of what they see and what they do. And it goes a lot of, it, it tells me a lot of things that is happening in the society today, that some people are inspired negatively and others are inspired, some kids are inspired positively in uh, different forms. And inspiration is there. So inspiration is everywhere and it can be shared in anything, in everywhere you see. It's just their eyes to be, you know, enlightened mentally to, you know, see these things beyond the measure. And you came up with a whole lot of things that um, you become purposeful, you become, you know, elevated, you, you begin to see things in the different, you get empowered, you know, you are driven, you are, you're, you're, there's an energy boost, you know, when you have that. So it's really what is really happening. And uh, you broke it down, you know, to the dignity, you know, you are coming down to break it to when, when you to see these kind of highlighted points and all that. And this is what are the situations when you have and enlightenment, when there's an inspiration, when an idea hits you and you begin to develop those ideas, those are the things you're going to experience. So I want to thank uh, um, Her Excellency Janice for this great uh, talk. I will still use it for the youths that are around me and try to you know, bring this out for them to see that these are things that are happening and that when you get an idea that hits you and all that, that when you are getting inspired by wanting all that, you make use of this idea, get proposed through, you know, come up with a, a, be creative, come up with other things when you're doing it, and then your life will be changed for better. Thank you, sir. I, I leave the time for professors in the house to say for a few things, sir. Thank you, my mentor. I remain <laughs> Stephen Abu from Lagos. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Stephen, for your, your yes, submission. And, and, and one thing that, um, one thing that you, you learn, um, interestingly, that you took note on it as well, is that with this, within the structure of inspiration, it, it is true. Sometimes you get inspired to, to do something or you create something and you have to be mindful, you know, that you're not desperate and the process to bringing it to the forefront causes you to lose it because sometimes you, you put something on the forefront so early and then you lose it. And, and I can assure you, there, there are some things that I have um, done as a leader. I've done as a leader that I smile because I learned something. Time is the great tester of commitment, of dedication, of all of the things that you can think about. Time is the greatest tester. Never, ever uh, forget that. I see your hand up, Stephen. Stephen, go ahead again. Go ahead. Yes, sir. I, I just remembered, sir. Yeah, you, you were inspired to do something, and because you couldn't publish it, so, so that people will not get to hold it. Um, that idea that you inspired and you have a product, you know, to burn tires without um, emission, you know, having negative emissions on the uh, emissions on the earth cross that will in harm the earth cross. It's still there. But what we do is, is the patient of waiting for it. I don't know if somebody else has been inspired. But a lot of people get inspiration from different locations and they might be seeking or that. You know, when you invent a thing, it's expedient from what, what I what we what, what I think is that it's expedient you bring the thing out, you know, you, you you bring it out, you know, with your own stamp, you know, for it to show. But because in, in due time, other people might be inspired, just as you are, uh, you have to bring out to those products. But you see, that you, you as, as a mentor, you said now that nobody has uh, brought that solution now and all that. And so I want to ask this. Uh, so, so nobody has brought that keen solution you have. That means you'll be highly unique and you went into definite researches to bring down, to nail it down, because there are other persons that have been revolving around what you have already, but might not get the definite. Thing. Yeah, yeah, talk, yeah, you did exactly. Thank you, sir. That's why I do this. Well, well, my my response to that is very interesting. There are some things that you want to put your name to. There are some things 
you know, it, you want to put your name to it. I want to, to put my name um, to this thing. There's so many different ways of recycling tires and, and burning toxic things. And there's so many different ways, to be quite honest with you, that what is in my heart that I have designed, as far as I'm concerned, is not that um, important for me to be desperate, to, to put it in the hands of somebody, and then they're able to, 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 to make it their own. So for me personally, it is just one of those pet things that I say, I want to put this on the, the steel name. I want to put this, even if I put it in Joshua Steele's name or something, but I want to have the privilege of doing that. And I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. It is written. It is there that if I'm not available, it will be made available at the right time. But I'm not in a rush. But I want to be in a position to do that. Am I hiding it from the world? No, I'm not hiding it from the world. You know, sometimes you have something and... And you, you, you want to, to give it to the world. But if you give it to the world prematurely, you will have so many others that will take it Thank and you. they will not have the full knowledge of what you want to give to the world. And they will take it and they will stop here because some people see only so far. They don't see any further. But you who have the vision see way down the road and you have a bigger plan. So, for example, with the, the class of steel is more than a Zoom meeting. The class of steel is not a Zoom meeting. There's a whole lot more to what we do and what we're doing, 10,000 times more. But there's some folks who came here and they see a Zoom meeting and they run and gone with their own Zoom meetings. But the class of steel is not just a Zoom meeting. There's some persons who come here, the castle steel is, is, is about mentoring. There's some persons who come here and they're running gone and doing their own mentoring. But the class of steel is not just about mentoring. So, so you have to look at what are you giving to the world? And, and, and you want to give that to the world. And you want to stick to it when you start so you don't stop. So that when persons come and they take a little piece, you're already one step ahead of them by far. You, you, you are always ahead of those that are capitalizing and adding value on your idea. That's also important. So whatever you're doing, make sure you're always one step ahead. I hope that answered your question. Your Excellency, Dr. Yours, please give us your take on inspiration. Professor, I hear somebody's calling you <laughs> Professor, Your Excellency. You're going down the road of Professor. Ah, ah. Yes, sir. A pleasant good evening to you, sir, and a pleasant good evening to yours, His Majesty, and all the excellencies in the house. It's another privilege, sir, to be in the class of steel another time. Your fantastic mentoring group, mentoring, talking about principles of inspiration. Now, inspiration is a state of mind where you feel highly stimulated. <laughs> and the word stimulated, extel it to another level, sir, where sometimes you got idea, desire, uh, things for you to, to, to motivate. And one of the things that I love with the class of steel, especially with you and, and, and Lady Jeremy, is it's quite simple. And I like how sometimes the biblical states say the, 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 the Lord used the basic things of this world to confound the wise and prudent. And so therefore, sir, the smile that Lady Jenny gives, my God, that woman, no wonder I've seen your mind, you married her. The smile that you give, it's an inspiration, you're laughing, but it is an inspiration. It takes your mind off things, you look at life and it did a change of mind, the, the mindset emotionally and ready to change and look at new ways, the new ideas. So when you smile, it stimulates. Smile is energy. Smile, change your whole environment. Yes. And as simple as you see, it stimulates the mind. So you know, whether you're depressed or you're down or you're fed up or you can't stand your job or whatever, whatever, a smile, can change your mindset. So bringing up sir, about inspiration, even a smile is inspiring. Even mm -hmm. a smile can change your mindset. And, and all the different things that you've shown, sir, about, you know, in life, what you can do and the motivation and the desire and so on, 
I can go penny for penny with all the desire and things that you said that I've through my journey, I would like to change or I would like to do. However, finance is always sometimes, sometimes some of the big struggles and the stronghold that we don't get to fulfill. But God knows the desire yes. of our hearts and he always works on the desire. Now, the class of steel, as you say, I can just endorse it, sir. And I like the way how you put it over, sir, talking about... Um, some people run, they come and take the glass of steel. Uh, as the chief protocol, a lot of things have come through to my to me where they ask where they can't they don't ask you, but they'll come to me as the chief protocol. And I have to use a lot of wisdom because they're catching on, they want to go and start their thing, they want to do their thing. However, today you hit the nerve, the punchline, the class of steel is not just mentoring group. There's a lot more behind the scene. And so therefore, when they run with your vision, or run with your idea, they, it, it always perish because it's not coming from them. So, sir, I salute you once again with the um, inspiration. There's a lot of things that we inspire to do. Um, a lot of people will come and go, you know, we've been there with it uh, and so on. However, you're still inspired to carry on. Oh, yes. You're still inspired to smile. <laughs> you're still inspired to do, because you are a classical example of about inspiration and about the principles of ins inspiration. So you are, a, and the class of steel, as we work together, we're in, the, uh, we're in the business um, of improving. We're in the business. Uh, it's a, it's a, a growing business that we're constantly changing. And progress. So therefore, sir, well done tonight um, and inspiring us to, to you know, to keep, keep on there and change our mindset, stimulate us. And I think we're going to conclude on this. It's the stimulation. So stimulate us and give us that another buzz of energy and give us another buzz of inspiration of carrying on and keep on keeping on with the class of steel. That's my take on it today. Thank you very much, sir. And back to you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And, and, and I will share this. I, I'm, I'm going to share this. And all of you that are under my, my mentoring, my teaching, my friendship, whatever, this is something I will give to you. Life isn't designed to be easy. It's not. Life, life is actually designed for survival of the fittest. That's what it is. Look around and you're going to see. It's about survival of the fittest. You, you, look, at, you, you look at living and, and the cost of living. The cost of living dictates... Only the fittest, the most creative are going to live because there's a cost to living. Now watch this, watch this. If you don't become creative when others are feeling, when the economy feels, what are you going to, die, to do? You have to be creative. You, you have to be resourceful. You, you, you have to be unique in your approach. You also have to learn this. If you have something that is special, you also have to learn when to put it on the forefront. Why? Because everybody wants to survive. It's called survival of the fittest. And the other thing that I, I, I learned is that survival is a mindset that is lonely. Because you might be inspired, but you being inspired does absolutely nothing for somebody else. Because if they don't see what you're seeing, then they can't be inspired likewise. They have to see what you're seeing, but it also has to add value to them. So, so you get to that place in life that you recognize your inspiration has to be from you, your place your people, your things, all of this that makes your inspiration, when others abandon you, when others decide they're no longer with you, you still have to keep on keeping on. Why? Because you're inspired. Farmers might be going through a difficult time, uh, Reverend Stephen. They might be going through a rough time. Churches or ministries might be closing. Businesses might be shutting down. But you need to reinvent yourself. 
You need to reevaluate what has happened and what is happening. And you need to position yourself that you can do what? Survive. Margaret Downs, Your Excellency Margaret Ame. Could you unmute yourself, Your Excellency, and, and just share your thought this evening with the class? Your Excellency Margaret, are you available to unmute yourself? Hello, good evening, everyone, especially you, my Bishop, Your Excellency, my Bishop, I greet you. Happy Easter. And also the First Lady, who is the GOC of the house. You know, in Nigeria, we say GOC is General Officer Commanding. And then uh, I wish a happy Easter too. And Josh, I've not seen him today pass. It's good that he passes sometimes when the class is on. And then I was also want to greet uh, the COP, the Chief of Protocol, uh, His Excellency Dana Hughes, and then also uh, my brother, Reverend Steve from Lagos, Nigeria, and also His Majesty King Madu. I bring us all Christmas uh, Easter greetings. I'm sorry I came into the class late, and I'm also sorry that I cannot own the video because we don't have light now. Even if I own it, nobody can see me. So I apologize for that. And I also want to apologize because I getting into the class was a little bit difficult, and I was not just getting everything, but I got inspired because uh, my mentor, you my bishop, uh, you have a lot of things that you have in inspired me like yesterday I was in the jungle and then uh, that is with some drug addicts in their hideout went there to celebrate uh, I was there to celebrate Easter with them and uh, I thought of you who's an inspiration to me because uh, you don't just discard people no and uh, in our context here not everybody welcomes a drug addict you need to welcome everybody. That's one thing you taught me. When you came and you came to homemakers, that's one thing you did that today we have a good number of the youth that have stopped drugs because of that meeting. So it's an inspiration to me. So I have just little that I have, that's my take today, but I have a lot that I have learned that I go and sit down on it and ponder on it and it's actually a good thing that you are doing for us. And it's appreciated. It's really, really appreciated. And that is me, Margaret Ahmed from Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir. I hand over to you. Thank you so very, Margaret. Um, I appreciate you as well. Margaret Ahmed, she is the founder and the CEO of Homemakers Women's Development Initiative, uh, international organization that is in special consultative status with the ECOSOC, the United Nations and ECOSOC, with the, uh, and I want to um, affirm her equally as a woman of like passion. When you are inspired to help those that are less fortunate, when you're inspired to, to be there with them, it adds such great value to you as an individual as you go forward. And, and I want to celebrate you, Margaret, for your um, contribution um, this evening. I, I see jumping in the class, the lioness. Lioness, you are, I know you're in the office and I know you might not be able to talk to us, but I know you couldn't resist coming in class. So lioness, take this link. I'm going to send you the link. Take this link and you can... You can put on your earphones and you can actually listen to it on YouTube. This evening's class was on inspiration. <laughs> I see, Lainis, I want to just greet, if you could greet us quickly, Lainis, go ahead quickly. I hope they don't see it on your staff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Steele. Um, as you can see, I, I've just um, started my evening shift. Uh, but I couldn't resist. I was looking at my own oh, they've started. Uh, I've just finished my handover. But like you said, I'm going to use my earphone and um, listen to it afterwards. I want to appreciate everybody here. Dr. Still, thank you so much for this great opportunity. I enjoy it every day. 
I can see His Excellency Stephen Abu. I, I send you greeting. Oh, I have seen the Chief of Protocols. His Excellency Donald U.S. Thank you so much. You look you look like a proper African man. <laughs> I can see her Excellency is not online is online, but um, um, I know she's listening. Thank you so much. And um, her Excellency Margaret Dogs Amen. Thanks everybody. I'm gonna like I'm gonna zoom off now, but I will be listening as we get along. Thank you so much. Lenis, thank you for also initiating myself and and the first lady last night. We are now friends of the lioness. I want to appreciate you for last night. It was phenomenal with yourself and his you. royal majesty and the family. We had a fantastic time last night and I want to appreciate you for that, ma'am. I'm grateful. Thank you, sir. All right, God bless you. So, so with that being said, I, I want to really thank you guys for following in this particular path that we are on. Listen to me as your mentor, just hear me. The, the, road, to, the road to survival, and, and I keep saying this, it's a journey, not a destination. Survival is not a destination. You see, when you just finish eating a meal, you're gonna get hungry when that meal passes out. <laughs> So, so, so getting that meal is not a, a, a destination. It is a journey because you need to get a little bit every day. Inspiration is the same way. You're going to need to be inspired every day. Some days the inspiration is going to come easy because you're going to have so many around you and, and so many things and so many people that are endorsing and supporting and playing a part and adding value and pouring into you some days. But there are going to be days where you, you, you don't even know where to look for something to eat. You don't even know. You don't even know how you're going to make it happen because that's just the nature of life. That's just the nature of survival. How many times have businessmen had to reinvent themselves survival how many times have business people had to reinvent their business survival but the most important thing that you need is that ability to understand inspiration i don't want you to take this class that we did today lightly please don't don't just skim through it and says, oh, I know that. It's deeper. Add value to it. Look at your own circle and look at your own personal life and look at your own packaging and presenting. Look, you, you know, when, I, when, when we started our business, The Class of Steel, I decided I would never work for nobody else again. Can I tell you the truth? That's going to come at a price. But the truth of the matter is I have to keep finding inspiration to keep me going. I have to keep working at things to keep that promise. Somebody asked me, Dr. Steele, do you have a CV? Why do I need a CV? I have been an entrepreneur from the time I was 19 years old as a carpenter. I've been a trademan. I've done so many. I've worked for other companies and corporations, yes. But I've never been one that needed a CV. Persons who wanted me to do something needed me because they knew who I was. So, I know, so a CV for me is, are you an inspired person? Have you positioned yourself where you will survive? The time is now 8.24 and I'm, and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. And I want to switch the subject to say something to all of you in the class of steel. This crisis that is facing the world, it's going to hit you. It's going to hit all of us. As a matter of fact, I will dare to tell you that uh, something very interesting, my, my wife and I looked at her, our gas and electric bill and, and we saw in the month of April, we got a bill and it was for, I think it is 300 and something pounds. Can you imagine? In May, we got a bill for 
1100 and something pounds. I kid you not as there's a God in heaven. I kid you not. I kid you not. And I called some folks and says, what madness is this? They say, yes, Michael, it's true. It's true. Things have changed. It is true. Your Excellency Donald Ewers, you're, you're in the UK. Is it true what I'm saying? Your Excellency Donald Ewers, is it true what I'm saying? Beyond, be tr yes, sir, it's true. It's going, up, it's going up in April and it's going to go back up again in October. So it's even going to be more. Your Excellency, so you see what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. And I was so, and guess what? And guess what? There is absolutely nothing we can do about it. Nothing. There is nothing we can do about it. Who are we going to quarrel with? Who's on fear? The Financial Service Commission? Who? Who's on fear? Who's unreasonable? What am I trying to say to you? This crisis is going to hit every single person. It is. Because you have to pay for the war. You don't have a choice because you're a citizen. Whichever country in the world you are, it's going to hit you hard. You have to pay for it. But there's something else. Stephen Abu and farmers are in a very interesting and unique position. They're going to have to look at securing areas of their farming because when shops and stores are not allowing individuals to be able to afford food, there's going to be a crisis. There's already food shortages in the UK. There are already food shortages in the US. In China, we have somebody in a class of steel that they're in China People are in lockdown in China and Shanghai. Why am I talking about this in the class of steel? I want you to look at redefining where you are right now and reinventing yourself for survival. You need to. And, and I don't want to be your mentor and, and, and just come and talk about everything else without telling you the truth of what is current. And what is current is some of you need to start looking at preparing for a nuclear warfare. You do. Oh, Dr. Steele, you are, you know, don't be, don't be trying to scare monger people. I'm not scare mongering you. If you are prepared for if it happens and it never happens, bless you. If you're not prepared for it and it happens, too bad for you. Did you get what I just said? I'm going to say it again. If you are prepared for it and it never happens, bless you. If you are not prepared for it and it does happen, poor you. How many of you have registered your mobile phone for updates when it comes to the crisis? If there's a crisis, you will get mobile updates. Is your phone turned on to receiving updates if there's a crisis? How many of you, how many of you watch the news that is, that is pointing in that area and recognizing that the world is pointing in that area? Linus, you and I are going to have a very private conversation and a meeting, you and I, Linus. I'm telling you, because those of you that are in the healthcare in, um, environment, be prepared. So don't take lightly what is happening around the world and think that is business as usual. It's not business as usual. The leaders of the world are reinventing themselves and they're doing a whole lot of things that you're not aware of because you're not doing your research. And if you don't do your research, you will not know how to handle it. So I hope that this little inspiration that I'm giving you, you will receive it and be inspired to do a little bit more research into what really is going on with Russia and Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine and what's happening in that region of the world and what's happening is in China is absolutely no joking matter.
Uh, but people have been dying in Africa and there's been war in Africa. Oh, there was war in, with Saddam and, and, and no, 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 no. The whole financial system of the world is crashing. And if you don't look around and see what is going on with them getting rid of things and getting rid of surplus, do you know why they fight war? They fight war to get rid of oil. <laughs> Somebody's going to say, what? Yes, they fight war to get rid of oil. They fight war because they have so much metal and so much machinery that they want to destroy all of that metal and machinery and do a reset so that they can now start over and build back again. So the economy for metal and the economy for all these things is going to build back. Ukraine is going to be very wealthy. Why? Because of all the metal that is going to be there from tanks and all of these things that they're going to melt them and sell to the world when everything starts back. All of the planes that are crashed is going to be good because guess what? Boeing and Lockheed Martin and all of those companies that manufacture airplanes, they're going to need to do what? Get new contracts to make new airplanes to prepare for the next generation to come. They have to get rid of all of these planes because these planes are obsolete. So they need new planes that are going to follow with new technology. So how would you bring new technology to your fleet? By getting rid of old technology. How will you get rid of old technology? Let's do some war games. Let's have some fun. Come on, Crasso Steel. I'm talking to you different than the world will speak to you. I'm talking to you because I want you to think and I want you to understand and I want you to be inspired. World wars are just part of the process of re inventing an opportunity to add value to the next generation. That's the reason. In 1939, 1940, you saw it. And it started a whole new revolution and a whole new boom of technology. Why? Because the technology is, de is developed, it is enhanced, it is improved, but the obsolete vehicles that they have currently can't use it. So what do you do? You get rid of these that they have, and you get new ones after the reset. So please, Class of Steel, all of you that are in the Class of Steel, please, don't listen to propaganda and, and don't, don't be focusing on, on Will Smith and, 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 and other things, crisis. Don't be distracted. Stay focused. How are you going to survive? What is your bank doing with currency? Have you upgraded your bank cards? Have you gotten a, a closer relationship with your banking to understand what is new and what is different before it traps you? How are your phones and your mobile phone technology working? Have you gotten a new mobile phone that is able to handle the technology that exists? Or are you going to have a mobile phone that is going to be no use to you? All of these are things you need to look at. I hope I've inspired you to check the news. You, you read the Bible and you hear them talking things as Christians, there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. If you look at what's happening in China, people are inside of rooms and locked up in skyscrapers and there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and people are jumping out to kill themselves. It is real, by the way. Now, let me add some value to this and close for you. Because I am very, very passionate about what I'm telling you from my research and my studies for many years. And I'm going to tell you this. When China got the first outbreak, that's where it started. That's why they blame Wuhan. A lot of people did not keep their radars on Wuhan. They just got distracted with so many different things. But I might dare to tell you that you need to watch China so that you will see exactly what's going to happen in the UK. China went into lockdown first, then the UK and the rest of the world. The second lockdown, then the UK and different parts of the world. My friends, China is in the third lockdown. What do you think is going to happen to the rest of the world? I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I'm not trying to be any great prophet. I'm just telling you, look around observe what's happening, and recognize it's normal. There's nothing abnormal about what's happening. It's normal. 
It has happened before, but we just were not here. And it has happened so that they can bring in new technology. And you know that by 2030 is when the new technology is expected to be in. So what do they have to do within the next, it's 2022, within the next eight years, we're going to see a whole lot of changes. Hopefully by 2025, a lot of the things that are to be destroyed will be destroyed by 2025. So that in 2026 and 2027 to 2030, we will have a period where there's going to be a reset. Com countries are going to have new contracts for metal. Countries are going to have new contracts for creating airlines. They're going to have new contracts for tanks and for, for warfare. That's one of the biggest budgets in the world. So they're going to reset that budget globally. Everybody's getting rid of all of their things. That's why the whole world is going to be a part of this war, because they have a whole lot of stuff to get rid of and upgrade. Don't be surprised. There's a whole lot of food that is being made, man-made food, that they're trying to cause your body to be able to eat and process that food. Because they see the population of the world is increasing. So a lot of things that we're getting that is natural right now, they already have manufactured those things. You can get manufactured fish, manufactured animals, manufa you even have manufactured human beings. Why? Because they're preparing for the next generation to come. Are you upgraded? Are you up to date? I'm His Excellency Dr. Michael Steele, and I have not been here to scare Mongo or anything. I actually didn't even plan to, to do that, but it happened, so it's out there. But I want you to stay focused. I want you to keep your eyes on China and what's going on up in Russia, and look at what is happening around you with food shortages. Look at where those ports and harbors are blocked and ships can't move. The reason why that happened is so that food and, and stock and provisions don't get across. It's all a part of the plan to do the reset. I hope that you don't just take this lightly and ignore what is happening. Your Excellency Jeannie Steele, I'm going to close. I know that you and I are passionate with all of this. So please um, give your final word, Your Excellency Jeannie Steele, before we close the class. First Lady, please. A blessed good evening to everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, <laughs> you, you've left me a bit speechless because I wasn't expecting you to, to go there, but... Uh, either way, I'm glad that you did because I really would like people to look around and do a lot of research because information is so readily available. Yes, there are there's fake information and then there's true information. But if you are discerning and if you are seeking the truth, the truth will reveal itself to you. So I really would like to encourage the members of the class of steel, as well as, you know, um, the general public not to take things for granted any longer and to really look at what's happening, look at the, not only look at what's happening, but also take the time to study what the effects of what is happening will be. You will see the effects of what were happening, the long-term effects of what is happening and what our leaders are putting in place and what they're trying to do and how they're doing it and how to look after yourself, your families and your communities and put things in place to, I don't want to use the word survive it, but uh, to get through it. So... Uh, with that being said, I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. Uh, don't want to, as His Excellency said, we don't want to be conspiracy theorists, but we have been doing a lot of research. We are always doing a lot of research and a lot of studying. Uh, so, and, and doing a lot of comparisons, um, books and, you know, and all that. So we're able to see a lot more. And I, I wish a lot more people would want to do the same. But nonetheless, 
Um, thank you all for being here in the class of steel and those who listened in. Thank you for listening, listening in. I pray that the class continues to be a blessing to you. And again, I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. I wish you continued blessings for the new week. My love to you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm going to share one link with you. And, and I hope that you, you get the chance to, to review um, this, what I will share with you. And this is one of my, my mentors. Um, I, I, I use the term mentor because I sat under his teaching back in the early 90s. And his name is, his name is Grant Jeffrey. And he's one of um, the persons that have been instrumental in, in giving me a lot of information that at the time, if I should be very transparent and honest, I actually thought it was hoax. And, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't recognize what you're hearing. But in 1994, 92, 93, 95, Grant Jeffrey was a, a regular um, teacher in, on, in, in our ministry, uh, a very regular one. And, and he has written many books. And, and Grant Jeffrey has, has taught a lot of things. So clearly the things that he would have taught in the time that he was there, and that was in 1991, 92, 93, 94, which are pointing to right now tells me something. It actually tells me that those things were available and they were in the know, but those who are in the know. So obviously from 95 till now, being microchipped and, and all of these things that are happening and, and, and different things like that, if those things were known since in the 90s, it tells me that the technology and the advancement till then, till now, they already had full knowledge of what they're doing, what they were doing, what they were planning to do. But the only people that were asleep is those that weren't listening and those that weren't doing research and those that were just seeing them as hocus pocus. But I might, I might tell you that some of us are sent as prophets to tell you things. We are not wrapped in a package you might want to see us in, but I can assure you, we will not lie to you. I'm His Excellency Dr. Michael Steele on the behalf of the Class of Steele Management and team. I want to thank you for being with us. Equally, I want to acknowledge the person of uh, Professor Carlos Santos and Ethos Asset Management um, Company as one of our close, close uh, partners and my personal um, friend. And I wish him and the Ethos Asset Management team continued success as we continue to redefine what is happening globally. Check Ethos out. Check Professor Santos out, ethosasset.com. And you'll get a bit of knowledge as well on things that are going on around the globe that you will never be aware of otherwise. Thank you so very much for being with us in the class of Steve. Good evening and God bless. Bye for now.